So you wanna know how to make black powder that's better than this stuff, this stuff, and even this expensive foreign stuff. Now, before I get a bunch of angry comments from the Swiss Black Powder Fan Club, hear me out. If you do use this method, you will, in fact, get more powerful, faster-burning black powder than any of the commercial brands out there. Ready? So this method is commonly known as the CIA method. And so the way you do this is you dissolve the potassium nitrate in a little bit of water, and I mean a little bit. Um, if you're using 100 grams, I use four, 100 grams of potassium nitrate, I use four ounces of water, so not much. And uh, you dissolve that over hot water. Till it's dissolved, you add your charcoal and your sulfur, and you mix it up until it's just about boiling. You, you want it bubbling pretty good. And then as soon as that is happening, you take equal amounts of cold alcohol and pour it right in there and stir it around really good. And this uh, solidifies it and gets it all to bond. And so after you stir it around, we pour it through a, a cotton t-shirt into a bucket here and then we wring it out really good. And this is what you're left with. Now, if you felt so inclined, you could put this stuff out in the sun or under a heat lamp, and after it dries, it is really good powder. But what separates the men from the boys and the hobos from the professionals is the next step. So after your CIA method powder is completely dry, you put it in the ball mill and run it for about 24 hours. Uh, you probably could run it for a little bit less, you know, maybe half of that, 14, 12, 14 hours, but uh, 24 hours works pretty well, so that's what we do. So after your powder comes out of the mill, the next thing that needs to happen is it needs to be compressed. And I believe this technique is called corning. Don't ask me why. But these here are what they call a pucking die. And so what you do is you take your powder and you get it wet just a little bit, just to where it's not, you know, dusty. And you pour some in there and then you put that other piston on the top and then we put it in our 20 ton press and we press the shit out of it to form our powder into these nice uniform looking pucks that are all about a quarter of an inch thick. So after that dries for a day or two, now comes the really tedious part. Now, these things are as hard as a rock. And so we put them in a plastic tub and we break them into pieces with a hammer and we sort them with a variety of strainers to get uh, basically three size. We have 2F, 3F, and then the dust that is just thrown back into the mill powder that needs to be compressed. Now, if anybody watching this saw my first how to make black powder video, you might recall me talking about how my powder was about 20% weaker. The reason for that is density. Let me explain. This is the old fashioned powder. It is made dry, it is not compressed, it is wetted and then granulated through a screen. But if you take this powder and pour out 25 grains in a volumetric measure, it weighs 19.5 grains which if you hadn't noticed, is not 25. This is the new double whiz bang badass powder, 2F size. And if you measure out 25 grains volume and weigh it, it weighs 26.2 grains. This is also the new double whiz bang badass powder, 3F size, and it weighs 26.7 grains. And finally for the control group, 3F GoX, 25 grains of volume equals 25.1 grains. So the moral of this long, boring story is the reason why the old-fashioned powder was about 20% weaker is because it's about 20% lighter. And so to get the same amount of powder via weight, you need about 20% more in volume. And that's because it's not compressed. When you start compressing it in a dye like that, that's really a game changer as far as power goes. Um, as far as it burning cleaner, I think it being compressed really tight helps with that. Um, all of the powders that I've been making lately are made with Eastern red cedar charcoal, and I have really, really good luck with that. 
Now, I'm sure there's some internet pyrotechnic wizard out there that needs to tell me that everyone knows that you need to use willow charcoal for black powder. It makes the best black powder, so let me just address that. Yes, willow charcoal does make damn fine black powder. It is not the beat-all, end-all for black powder. I've tested all kinds of stuff. I've tested all different kinds of pines, cedars, hardwood, willow, all kinds of stuff. Um, the only reason why I like Eastern Red Cedar Charcoal basically is in my part of the country, it's the easiest for me to get a hold of. But yes, Willow does make good black powder. Anyway, so these tests here are the speed tests and they are measured in inches per second. Go ahead and go. Three days. And just so everyone's clear that all of those tests were the same distance at 12 inch and the same amount of powder at 40 grains of each. This is our 3F Homemade. This is 3F Goex. And then down at the bottom here, we have 3F Swiss. Now, one of the things you might have noticed about the Swiss is how sparkly it is. And I think the reason why is Swiss is heavily, heavily graphited. Now, all sporting powders are graphite coated, but if you, I mean, just look at the difference between Goex and Swiss, and you can see how shiny Swiss is. Now, I've tried that with my powder, and I didn't particularly care for it. First off, I didn't really notice a difference. Second, it just seemed to make it slower. So, but you know, if there's one thing that Swiss has over my powder, it's the fouling. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now I posted this video earlier, separate, uh, that was just a quick test uh, with my smooth bore, and um, we were shooting 75 grains, and it's, sh it's shooting great. Um, one of the things I was noticing with my rifle, with my old powder, was if you really didn't bump that charge up a good 20 or 25 percent, the accuracy would really go to shit. But this is 75 grains, patched round ball, smooth bore. I'm shooting at maybe 15, 17 yards, but I'm shooting at small targets, and it shoots great, and it has plenty of power, um, and I tried some Goex and some Swiss loads as well. Feels exactly the same. In fact, mine even might feel better. Now, with that being said, the Swiss fouling story. I don't know how or why they are able to do it, but for whatever reason... They j Swiss just their fouling is lesser no matter what. It's lesser than any of my powders, it's lesser than Goex, it's lesser than DuPont, it's any other powder I've ever tried. And that's the general consensus with just about everybody is th their powder makes less fouling, and that's why a lot of guys like it. Um, but you know what? M my powder is faster and is more powerful, so take or, or leave it, you know. I know there's a lot of dudes out there that like Swiss and they like to stick with it. And any time I'm ever critical of Swiss, it seems like I'm always getting a lecture. So with that being said, I don't mean to pick on the Swiss guys, okay? I, I use their powder and I use it mostly in my, uh, my Kibler long rifle. But I've used my powder in it as well. I swab it every two shots anyway, whether I'm using Swiss or not. It's just the fouling is less if I'm using Swiss or my stuff. Now, I've only chronographed this through uh, my long rifle. I haven't tried it with any of my other guns. But on average, it's 100 feet per second faster than Swiss and 160-ish, not quite 200 faster than Goex with a 50 grain load of each, same patch, same bullet. 
Um, so this powder is more powerful and it is faster. Again, the fouling is right on par with Go-X. Don't even bother with that Pyrodex junk if you're shooting a flintlock. Don't even, just don't even try it. It's just bad news all around. Um, it's, it's more powerful and it's faster than Swiss. Only thing Swiss has on it, and it's a big deal for some people, and I understand that, is the fouling. But overall, you want to make black powder that is just as good or better than the commercial stuff, this is how it's done. And as usual, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you did think it sucked, well, then make your own damn video.